All right. Uh, for those of you that need a refresher or those of you that missed the uh, lecture on SketchUp, uh, here it is. Um, so you can go ahead and go to Google and type in SketchUp or go to your web browser and type in SketchUp, hit enter, and right here you see SketchUp free. Click on that. And uh, go ahead and go to start modeling. And you might have to log in and sign in. Once you're signed in, you can go ahead and start sketching. Uh, let me pause this real quick. All right, now we're back. Okay, so um, this is Frank, and you can delete Frank if you want to, or leave him there as reference. I typically delete him, so he's gone. Bye, Frank. All right, so we'll go over a few things. Um, the title of your drawing, you can, uh, if you click on SketchUp, you can save right here on Trimble Connect. Uh, this is a little online storage that is free, and you can rename your uh, file whatever you want. Um, and I am going to name this um, Practice House Art 113 and save it. And once it's saved, it will automatically save periodically. So if uh, you find that it's bogging, you know, SketchUp is bogging down, most likely it's probably saving. Have some patience and understand that this is free, so it's not going to work entirely perfect. Um, anyway, with that being said, if you depress and hold the uh, mouse, as I was saying, if you depress and hold the mouse uh, scroll uh, ball, you can orbit and then you can move everything around um, to kind of navigate, help you navigate quickly through this. Uh, we'll go over a few things real quick. Uh, we went over um, saving um, and this is the Trimble Connect where you can locate your saved items. Uh, now we'll go over the tools. Right here is the selection tool. You can use this to select different lines. Uh, right here is the eraser tool. Uh, this is the paint bucket tool, as well as the eyedropper. This will help you sample material or colors. Um, this is the line tool, and you can see how this is uh, a pencil, and this one's kind of like a freehand. And what this freehand does is it allows you to draw freehand via your mouse. Uh, where this one is more of a polygonal line segment by line segment type of drawing. And this is what generally we like to, to use uh, when we are drawing. These are your arcs. You can draw arcs uh, in various manners. I typically use the two-point arc, this one right here. Uh, it works really well for me. Uh, but you're welcome to use any one you want. Uh, this is a basic tutorial. All right, uh, here you can draw different polygons, uh, rectangles, uh, corner to corner. This one, uh, I this is a rotated rectangle. I hardly ever use it. Uh, you can draw circles and other polygons, and you can add three-dimensional texts. Um, this is the push-pull tool right here. It helps you extrude your two-dimensional drawings into three-dimensional objects. We'll get into that. This is your follow me tool. Uh, this is a, a great tool that you can use to create a lot of um, um, different moldings, um, different uh, like crown moldings or even um, uh, borders around doors uh, for framing. 
um, offset tool. This is the offset tool. This is great when you're making walls, when you're making windows and doors. This is a very, very useful tool. Um, this is the outer shell. Um, it'll help you select uh, you know, different items. Uh, since this is not the Pro, you um, you are limited to your options. So uh, you can join different items, and it will automatically erase other things, or you can create voids, stuff like that. When you do upgrade to the Pro, these these options are given to you. Um, this is the move tool. This is the rotate tool, and this is the scale tool. And, okay, sorry about that. I'm in my office and I had a phone call. Okay, this is the scale tool. Uh, we're not going to use that right away, but uh, this is a useful tool if you are adding pictures and stuff like that, or uh, if you want to add different uh, elements into your um, SketchUp drawings, you can use that. Um, but we're not going to use it uh, in this lecture. Uh, this is a tape measure tool. You can get quick tape measures of uh, lengths uh, or heights on in your model. Uh, this is a dimension tool. You can add dimensions if you'd like. Um, and here's some uh, call out letters that you can do. This is a section plane. Uh, this is a little protractor to help you guide you. Uh, and this, these are your axes. Uh, this is a walkthrough that you can do uh, and look around. Uh, you can actually make walkthrough videos using SketchUp. Uh, I haven't tried the free version, so I don't know if it's quite available for you. Um, but uh, this is just the basics, so um, it, you're more than welcome to use YouTube to try and create what you want to create. Um, and this tool, these are your navigation tools. This is your orbit. Uh, you can depress and hold your, your uh, mouse wheel to, to get this function. Uh, this is the pan tool. If you left click and hold down, you can move move stuff around um, doing that, uh, the, pan, the pan tool. And it helps you pretty much like grab your paper and slide it over. Um, that's what that is. Uh, so if you need that. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. If you use your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. This is zoom extents. Uh, it'll zoom proportionally to where it ma it'll maximize the amount of seeing space on your, um, your drawing plane. Uh, and over here, we have your entity info. Um, here you have your outliners. Uh, this is the instructor. If you have any questions, this is like a help guide. Uh, these are your components. You're able to look up uh, different components on like a warehouse that they have. So if you're looking for a particular chair or if you want to go to a manufacturer's website and download the SketchUp file and you can import it into your uh, model, you can do that. And over here, there's, this is your materials. Uh, you can see how when you scroll over anything, um, it it kind of gives you a label of what it is. So if you were to click on materials and click search right here next to this little house, um, once it comes up, you can see how there are different materials that you can choose from and you can add that to your um, model. Here's the different styles that are available. Um, you can um, You can uh, render things in, in different styles, uh, or you can view things in, in various styles. These are the, right here's a default style, and uh, typically it's set to, to this one right here, so you can, you can see a little color, but if you start rendering or adding material right away, it starts to bog down, so be careful. Um, right here are your layers. I highly recommend using layers. Um, and in fact, we'll go ahead and make a layer right now. So if I want to add a layer, just click right here, this plus sign, add a layer. And I will make this the, oops, click right in here, change the name, wall layer. Change that. And let's put this uh, door 
layer and uh, window layer and then this one I want to do the materials layer and another one let's make this the roof layer and I kind of want to separate the you kind of want to separate these so you can have more control of what layers you can turn off and turn on in case things start bogging down and so right now I want to create uh, the walls. And so I want to make this my current layer. And if you see this pencil lit up, that means that's the layer you are drawing on. Uh, before it was on the zero layer. Uh, I'll keep the zero layer at zero layer. That's fine. I'm not going to change that. So the wall layer. And I'm just going to make a simple box. And all I'm going to do is start at the origin. And I always recommend starting at the origin. Um, and you see how there's a green axis, a red axis, and a blue axis. Your green and your red are your X and Y coordinates, and your blue are your Z coordinates. This is the three-dimensional one. So right now what we're doing is we're going to build the two-dimensional geometry in order to build up the three-dimensional geometry. So I'm just going to make a 20 by 30 room. And you can see how once I click on this origin, now I start pulling away at the uh, from away from the origin. It starts to draw a line, and it's not freehand. This is this is that polygonal line segment by line segment. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that it is perpendicular to this red line, and so I'm just going to follow along. And if you see, if you notice that there's a grip that, that keeps going in and out, it's a red grip. Uh, that no uh, well and also an indicator uh, that you are on the green axis it literally tells you it's on the green axis now right here towards the bottom you can specify the length just by typing you don't have to click in there just type in 20 feet uh, 0 inches and notice how I use the apostrophe and the quotation the apostrophe is to indicate that it is in feet and the uh, quotation is to indicate that it is in inches. So once I hit OK, or once I hit enter, it draws a line. You see the line right there, uh, right here. It's already drawn. And I'm ready to continue from that endpoint. You see how it says endpoint? On. And you see how it says on red axis? Well, the, what that means is that I am per, um, parallel to this red line. So I'm drawing perpendicular to this green line. And that's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do 30 feet. And the neat thing about SketchUp, it, it helps you draw. So um, I need to make sure I'm on the green axis. And I am going to be parallel with the green. Although it might not look like it's parallel, it it is. It's in perspective, so understand that it is in perspective. So things might not look exactly straight, but as long as it says it's on this green, it is. All right, so now you saw how it went from this to this. What does that mean? That means this plane is now closed using this line, this line, this line, and this line. So this is a good indication that you are ready to pull up. So I click and held it. Uh, you can, oops, undo. Mm-hmm. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I go up to, well, I don't even know how high this is, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments because I kind of kind of messed up. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing construction lines to make sure that I can I can ensure that Okay, I'm at uh, 
one foot ten and three quarter. All right, and so I'll have to do a little math in order to calculate that. But the reality is, when you uh, use your push pull, what you want to do is uh, left click and hold, and then type your distance. And so I want this to be ten feet. Uh, from finish floor to finish ceiling. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put nine feet uh, two in. No. Mm. Nine feet. Let's do nine feet. Uh, one. And. Five eighths. Oops. All right, and oops, nine feet. One. Now you have to be careful because when you move your mouse, this distance disappears like so. So you have to start over. I know it's kind of annoying, but it is free. Nine feet. Ah. Okay. So now that's approximately ten feet or ten, eleven feet. And I want 11 feet because I do have a second floor that I want to start. Anyway, um, actually, you know what? Let me bring that back down one foot. Oh, what did I do? Okay, so now this is at 10 feet. All right, so now you have this extruded, and you have basically a solid block. Uh, but you know, in in homes, and you, you don't have a solid block. You know, you have walls. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I highly recommend hitting save. And you see how it says saving. Now you can start doing stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to use the offset tool. Now, if I click on this, click on this plane. Um, just left click real quick and let go real quick. You can see how it moves back and forth, but I can type in a distance. I can say I want this six inches and type in six inches and um, hit enter and automatically it will adjust to six inches. Now I could have easily drawn all the walls first and then just raised the walls, that's fine. Uh, but this kind of just helps me go faster. Um, and I could draw the rest of the walls here if I wanted to. So if I wanted to draw, if I knew the dimension from here to here, and I can just draw like, let's just say this is going to be a, I don't know, eight foot line. And you have these grips. That's the end point of that, that line. And I want this eight feet as well. And what I want to do is offset this another six inches. And bam, I've created a room. And what I can do is I can delete this line and this line using the erase tool. And I can use the push pull tool right here to bring that back down. And I can create all my other rooms the same way. Just continue, or I don't know, maybe I'm going to go over here to five feet. Maybe it's only going to be a bathroom, or let's do six, let's do six feet, six feet. And then you got to find the end point. That's the midpoint, and that's the end point of that. And so let's do another six six feet. Or you know what, let's just, let's just make it all the way to the end. 
And then what I can do is I can just offset this again, six inches. And I'm good to go. Um, and then I can just use the erase tool to, to clean up some of the geometry. And uh, select this, because that is just a plane. And if that confused you, all I did was make a make this a solid plane, and I didn't want that. I would want this to be a room. And I can start adding doors in here later on. We'll we'll get to that. Um, and so I want to use the push pull tool. Select anywhere inside this plane, and I can match this uh, dimension on face. So this right here and that right there are at the same plane. And I can do the same over here on face. There you go. They're both on the same plane now. Um, if I wanted to add a floor, I would have to go underneath and add a little floor. It looks like I went a little too far. So I can go on face and then that kind of just disappears. Um, but anyway, you can see how I'm just building my walls. And uh, I can continue to go on from there. Um, I don't know, let's just say this is going to be the living room slash, slash kitchen, and this is going to be the bedroom. Um, you know, I can add kitchen um, counters and stuff here. Um, but for argument's sake, let's just say we're done, and we'll add... Um, a window here and then a door and then probably another window here so what I can do is I can draw reference lines just go up two feet or two and a half feet how however high you want your window sill and so I'm just gonna go two feet and then go to the end point right here and this is just going to be a a reference line of where I want my windows. So now that I know that this is where I want my windows, uh, I can go ahead and specify um, how far I want them over. And um, I can do that just by going, again, drawing lines. Let's just say I want to draw this, I don't know, two feet over. And find the endpoint. There's the endpoint right there. Um, and then I can do the same over here. Just draw two feet over. Hit enter. Find the endpoint. Okay, there's the endpoint. And these are just reference. All I'm going to do is just delete these in the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this uh, rectangle and uh, on the bottom right where it says dimensions I am going to specify the dimensions so I want this um, four feet four feet high and four feet wide so four by four why not So I'm going to type in 4 feet, 0 inches, comma, 4 feet, 0 inches. And why is it not going? 4 feet, there we go. Ah, 4 feet, 0 inches. Hmm. four feet all right there it goes and then I could do the same over here four feet comma four feet enter all right so now that I have that uh, what I can do is I can use the offset tool 
to create an edge or a, a, a frame. And I can offset this two inches and do the same over here. Just click anywhere inside and pull it to the direction whether you want to go offset it inside or outside. I want to offset it outside, so I'm going to offset it two inches, type it in, hit enter, outside. Um, and then we need a front door. So I'm just going to eyeball it here. Oops. I need to get out of this command and go back into the rectangle. So the rectangle, I'm going to make this seven feet, comma, 3.5 feet. Oop, did that wrong. So the width goes first. Oh, this is the back arrow right here, and that's the forward arrow. So um, let me do corner to corner, and there we go. So 3.5 feet, comma, 7 feet, enter. And there we go. So I can offset this again. And what I want to do is delete this line because I want to offset this, these three lines right here. So um, go right here to offset. Click in here. Now I can offset interior or exterior. I want to do exterior. So I'm going to do two inches again and go from there. All right, now I need to do a little bit of cleanup. So I need to clean this up right here, right here, right here, and just delete. All right. So now we got our windows, we got our doors, and we're just going to do some cleanup, clean the geometry up. Um, so we made our two-dimensional geometry, and what we're going to do is continue to work on our three-dimensional geometry. So now that is cleaned up, uh, what we can do is create the uh, molding for the doors and the windows. And so to do that, I would uh, press and hold down on the mouse wheel so I can get a little bit vertical view on that. What we want to do is create the two-dimensional um, We want to create the two-dimensional uh, geometry that we need to go three dimensions. And so here I'm going to create the two-dimensional. And you kind of want to just stay on the green line. And so all I'm going to do is create the three-dimensional, or I'm sorry, the two-dimensional um, geometry for this, and go from there. This takes a little practice uh, to use the arc and get it to where it is working. Um, as you can see, that arc is a little wonky, and so I'm going to have to delete that arc. In fact, I will just cheat a little bit and just make it there we go. Let's just do it on face. And so what you can do is you can make these lines to help you with creating a um, Mm -hmm. Mm 
All right, so you see how it closed up that geometry, and that's what we want. We want to make sure that when we, when we draw this, it closes up this geometry. Now, this is an arbitrary shape that I just made. Um, there are trimmings that are uh, that you that are already made, and you can um, buy them already prefabbed. You can go to the manufacturer's website, and they'll have this template there for SketchUp, so you can import it, put it there. And we are going to use the follow through command or follow me command. This is the follow me command right here. Click on that. Go ahead and click on this plane in here inside the geometry that we created. And oops, let's go back. And so what happens is you you can uh, much like the push pull, you can pull up and you can see how it makes a three dimensional geometry. You'll also notice right here on the left, this this line of the window is highlighted in red. Well, we are going to use our mouse to follow that red line, that reference line, and just keep going all the way around until we make the frame. And if you notice that, um, oops, all right, you got to kind of just make sure that this lines up right and you'll notice that the geometry started to work right after that and this is now our window frame um, and that one's done if I wanted this same frame on the other side I, I can copy the entire thing um, or just back up one step and copy this over to the other side and I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to use my select tool copy uh, if you hold down shift you'll see in the middle of my screen there's a plus and minus that will help you select all the lines that are needed to create this geometry so you're going to need that and then right click and go right here to copy And I can go over here to paste, uh, right click, paste, and paste it here. It looks like it pasted in side the wall so I'm going to go ahead and move this to the outside of the wall and I know it's kind of kind of wonky and I'm still going to move this to oops exit Well, I mean, I could still follow along um, around. So, um, actually, let's go back. Let's go inside the wall. Okay, let's. Here's what I want to do. I want to grab this edge and bring it to this corner. And then, then I'll be good. All right. And then I kind of want to keep this same pattern going because I don't want to recreate the wheel. So I'm just going to right click again, paste, and here we go. And so now I have 
all the two-dimensional geometry I need. I can go back to follow me and click right here. And oops. Again, this is not perfect. So what you want to do is try again. Click click really fast, left click really fast, and then just create your geometry and then right here you want to end point on that red line done go back to follow me click real fast on there and keep going around to the edge zoom in and make sure that it is All right, I don't know what's going on right here, but it's it's almost done. Okay, let me try this again. Okay, so now I'm following this edge, so I should get a better outcome. All right, yep, that's what I want. All right, and then zoom in and do the same. Let me get that. Okay, now that my trimmings are done, I can go ahead and, well, I had that on the wall layer, so I should probably put that on the window layer. Oops. Okay, so now I kind of drew the windows on the wall layer. What you can do is uh, select that, and um, you have the entity info. If you right click, you can go on entity info. This, this little thing pops up, and then you can just switch to the window layer. And so now the windows are on the window layer. And I gotta make sure that this door is on the door layer. So put that on the door layer. And if for whatever reason I want to just not look at the door, I can just click on that. And so now those are separated. Uh, I am going to use the push pull to add a little depth. Um, and then just, oops. You can totally take out the door if you want. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but you can. I want to make sure that this is lined up on face. And that is on face. And this is on face. So um, now you have a door and window, and I can make a doorknob. Uh, or you can go to the manufacturers, they have doorknobs, that's usually they're already done. Um, but now what I want to do is create um, the second floor. So what I'm going to do is go here. Again, you, you're going to have to make stairs and stuff for yours. Um, but I am going to make a plane. Then I'm going to extrude ah, what's going on? Hmm. 
Clean this up. Well, if it's not going to do it, then I will go in and make sure it's done. Endpoint to endpoint, and this should. If it doesn't close up, do a diagonal. And you can do another diagonal like that, and it'll close up. You can see if deleting these lines makes it go away. If it does, great. If it doesn't, mm, there's other ways around it. Um, so I'm just going to clean this geometry up really quick. All right, now I have something to go off of. Um, what I want to do is use the push-pull and go up a foot. So one foot. And then everything else is on face. And let's bring this up. All right, let's clean up this geometry. Um, let's clean this edge up. And I don't need this anymore. That. Of course, these walls are going to be different. So, and you could punch a hole through for your um, stairwell. Again, it, it really just depends on where everything is at. Oops, I did undo. Okay, and then you can just start creating you know, a whole new space for everything. Uh, I'm just going to go for six inches. All right, again. Six inches. Oop, I don't know what, what went on here. Something funky went on over here. Oh, it looks like everything got deleted. Uh, all right, so there we go. Okay, let's clean up the geometry right here and right here and right here. Let's just say, for whatever reason, this is our second floor. Uh, I can use the push pull. And go up another 10 feet and you know start adding windows and doors and anyway you can see how you can get very intricate in these designs and I'm just going to cheat a little bit and copy let's paste um, There we go, and then 
right click, paste again. All right, I don't know why that did that, but you can move this to grab the endpoint. And if you bring it up next to And you can line it up and now that's even so and um, again we'll continue all right so kind of just did a little bit of geometry to pop out a few things um, using the push pull let me pop this out match right here oops I don't know why that went away But it's a SketchUp, and so you just learn how to deal with it. Um, again, push pull. And you can clean up afterwards. And if things start to disappear that you don't want to disappear, uh, you can hide lines. And so I can show you how to do that. Let me go ahead and clean this up and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right. Now, what I want to do is offset. this let's offset this um, three inches I want to do a railing so I'm going to create this line here and then one here and clean up my geometry because I need to uh, pull this up a little bit mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going to do one more offset. And I guess that's it. So, anyway, I'm going to clean this up and go from. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use that as my rail. Go ahead and push pull. I'm going to go up three feet. Um, that might be too much. Let's see. No, that's, that's fine. All right. I am going to make a door here. And I forgot to make. This line. Okay. Done. And you can see how you can easily get distracted and not correct a few things. 
Uh, let's see what's going on here. Escape. So, what happened here is that this line is not touching anything on this floor. So, what I'm going to do is fix that. And now that it's fixed, it should, no. Nope. deleted and it is up to you to fix it. Oops, I don't want to delete that. I want to push pull. Oh, that's what happened. So when I pulled this out, it didn't. There we go. And now, Sometimes cleanup is is a hassle, and here we go. Push pull. It's not, it's definitely not perfect, so. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh wow, that whole thing just went away. So I tinkered around and I made a balcony and I don't like this line there. So what I want to do is select it, right click, and then hit hide. Uh, looks like there's more than one there. Hide. Um, and then you can do that to kind of clean up your geometry. Um, hide. 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 Um, and don't worry about the different colors because you're going to add materials and um, that's not going to matter. So what I want to do is add sliding glass door here. There we go. Just kind of eyeballed it, but you can measure it and um, go from there. So push pull, slide one out, and slide that one a little bit. So it looks like um, you are going to offset the um, sliding glass doors are a little different. Um, and then I can add a little overhang. Um, over this patio. 
Again, you don't eyeball it, use, use the dimensions and go from there. Okay, I'm okay with that. All right, and now time to put on the roof. Okay, as long as you have your roof, um, your roof line, you're good to go. What I'm going to do is uh, clean up the geometry first on top because I am going to use the offset to help me out because it's quicker and go from there. And you kind of want to zoom in everywhere. Make sure, okay. So, uh, here we go, offset, and select in this plane, and oh, edit undo, offset, Not alone. Oop. Let's just undo that again. Try it again. Let me click and hold. Yeah, there we go. So now I want to go out two feet. Okay. Two. There we go. <clears throat> so this is the overhang, and uh, what I'm going to do with this is create a roof for my structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from the midpoint. I've got to find the midpoint. And I want to say this, that's the end point. I might have to draw another line for reference. There we go. And find the midpoint of that line. That's the end point. Let's go over here. All right, so that looks like it's a midpoint. And I know my the apex of my roof is going to be at four feet. So I'm going to draw a vertical line four feet. And then just draw the ridge. All right. And so now, oops. I'm just drawing geometry to help me navigate. So I want to make sure that this is the midpoint. So I'm making this roof and I want to go up four feet from here. Four feet. And that should be good. And so I can create the roof.
that at a slightly different angle than I would have liked. I'm not done with the roof because roofs don't end like this and what I want to do is offset oops I'm going to clean this up we'll go ahead and offset Offset six inches and once that's offset delete that geometry and I'm going to continue this line and extend the edge and escape and I'll draw this straight down and so that will be the geometry that I need to create a ledge. Um, there you go. And just continue on. Again, you're going to have to do some cleanup. Um, that needs to be cleaned up. That needs to be cleaned up. And if you see your roof is kind of floating, that's because it is. Uh, you can try and close it up. Um, all right, let's finish making this roof. There we go. finish making this. All right, I completely undid the roof for whatever reason it was not working. I try to do it something different. Um, anyway, let's go back to the roof layer. Let's make this the component and let's do uh, offset six inches. And what we're going to do is bring down this line right there. And we'll do the same over here. And you see how SketchUp kind of helps you out with those two um, points. And now we're going to clean up the geometry. Oops, I don't know what happened. Let's do undo. All right, well, I'm not going to clean that. I'll just hide it. So. Hide. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is I will take, let's clean this up, and I'll take the geometry and push pull. So this, let's pull it all the way to here. I'm going to have to take this and do the same. And just on edge, that's fine. Go back around, do the same. On edge, and that matches. And so then what I'm going to have to do is uh, create the geometry for here. Four feet. Actually, that's a little off. That's why. And escape. Delete. There we go. And. So this is reference geometry I got from the ridge line. I wanted to match this. And, oops. There it is in blue. All right. Mm. So it's not matched. So you have to be careful. There it is. That is matched. All right. And I'm just going to build this roof based off of my reference geometry. So I referenced the ridge line and I want to keep it the same. And what I'm going to do is clean up the geometry. Let's clean this up, clean that up, clean that up. I don't need this line anymore, and this line can be gone. Offset, six inches. And do the same on this side. And that side. Let's see if I can clean the geometry up. Yes, I can. And that's fine. And now push pull. Match that roof. And that is pretty much how I want it. All right. Bring that in a little bit. Oops, I didn't want that. Oh, I don't know how that got deleted. So what I can do is close this up. And that'll work and go under here make sure everything's closed up and this thing is not yeah this thing is floating above
Yeah, all I'm trying to do is close this up. And there's a serious gap. Bless you. Excuse me. All right, well, let's do this. So I'm going to pause the video. Okay, now that the roof is complete and I kind of just finagled it to where it looks like I want it to look. Again, this is a representation. Uh, you're not going to do construction drawings off of this. Uh, SketchUp is just for three-dimensional modeling so you can get an idea of what's going on. So, uh, with that being said, let's... Uh, go to the materials. So, what I want to do is uh, go to glass. All right, this is a mirror, this is a mirror, and this is glass. So I can click here, click there. That's glass. That's glass, that's glass, that's glass, and that's glass. So you can see into your building. And if you had furniture in there, you could see through that. Uh, there might be some issues with some walls here, and that's why you can't see through. Um, I might even have to push pull a little bit. You know? But you can see in this one clearly. Um, and then you just got to go in and fine tune everything. Um, I can also go to wood. I can change this trimming right here to look how I want. And then you'll have to zoom in. And pretty much go through all of it and double check that. Everything is coded. And you can do the windows the same. I'll go ahead and pause the video and um, do that. Um, I will go ahead and change that. And I will get right back. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, make sure you're on your materials layer. And that way, when you do go and you start to add materials, to it and it starts to bog down. You can shut off other layers um, while you're working and this helps with the uh, bogging down. All right, I am going to continue to work on this and I'll get back to you. All right, I kind of want to show you how to do some railings um, and I didn't go into detail right here because um, if you go to right here, landscape, fencing, and vegetation, you can select a railing. Now, I know it's not see-through, but if you do both sides, it is. So, you do get that effect if you do both sides. And that is how you can do railing really quick. Uh, now you can get this railing off of your uh, materials. Um, you can find other materials uh, and download them onto uh, SketchUp with the Pro only, um, but this is good for now. All right, now that I added all my textures on the layer, uh, materials layer, I can go ahead and close that and you can see that if I were to choose another layer to be on, I can come here and shut off the materials layer and the materials uh, should have disappeared. But anyway, um, might take a bit. So with that being said, uh, you can see how this glass uh, corner 
can see right through the house. Um, and this glass you can see through the house. And you're supposed to be able to see through this side. I don't know what went wrong, um, but you can zoom in and cut through the house and see what actually went wrong. You can do a, where is it at? A section. So we can do a vertical section. And you can see, and you can move this section wherever you like. And you can actually see what's going on, what's actually being blocked. And it looks like these windows aren't back far enough. I don't know. Find out. But anyway, uh, that's a section. Uh, you can move the section however you like uh, using the move tool. Where is the move tool? Oh, here it is. And you can cut through the entire structure using a section and kind of find out what's going on. Like, I want to see what's going on here. And why can't I see through that? Hmm. Okay, it looks like yeah, this wall is is preventing me from seeing through. Um, I wonder. Anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with that. Um, what you can do very easily is make, oops, you can make a window on the inside as well. And then just move the section. over and go to the materials let me close these close that close that glass and mirrors close that and voila now you can see what's going on in the home and that's an easy way that's the easiest way to fix that issue uh, but typically, it's supposed to do this. But again, this is the free version. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, um, figure it out. Anyway, that's how you do a section um, to kind of see through it. Um, if you want to toss in furniture, let me go ahead and move this. Um, so this floor right here, what I can do is go to, let's close this up, close the materials, go to component, and this is a 3D warehouse, so I can say sofa. And there's all kinds of sofas here, sectional, this is fancy sofas, and I would recommend you do this and on its own layer, so make a furniture layer. Um, I'll just create a layer. Oops. Mm, let's do this. Ooh, what happened? Mm. 
Yeah. So it's bogging down right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is create a layer. Oh, never mind. Um, create a layer that's for furniture. And so when you go to render it and you have all this furniture in there, um, you can shut that layer off. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball it where, okay, that is that and anyway, you can see how easily you can put furniture in there. Um, so I'm done with the sofa. Let me get a plant. Oops, sorry, component. Oh, long area. Let me close that. Okay, 3D warehouse, plant. And I can have a house plant dropped right in. What happened to the plant? Mm -hmm. Oops. Escape. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. Okay, and it's not perfect, but try a different plan. That plant's really freaking huge. Stick it right there. Probably move it. This is probably better for the outside. There we go. Um, TV. If you want to put a TV. Um, you can do that, or a wall unit. You can do that too. Or just float a TV somewhere. But anyway, this is how you um, This is how you put fine furniture and put it into your, your drawing. Oh. And that is really freaking huge. I don't know who drew this and what scale. So I'm not dropping that in there. Uh, wow, this is awful. All right, so I'm just gonna delete that. Anyway, uh, you get the point. Uh, so TV, let's see. Uh, so you can see some are better than others. And you can drop that in there and move it. How you want. Ooh, escape. Uh, all right. Let's 
So you see now it can be filled with everything and um, once you move this and you can see right through, you can see what's going on in the home. Which window did we fix? Oh, I didn't finish that one. But you can see all your furniture inside. What's going on? I don't know what happened to that wall. Figure it out later. But anyway, that's how you do it in a nutshell. And I know this video is super long, um, but you can always watch it and reference it step by step. So don't forget your stairs, um, your materials. I would definitely hold off and uh, wait on that. Uh, I don't want to use this section anymore, so I'm not going to. Oh, hey, what do you know? There's the plant. Stuck inside the wall. Let me move that. Put plant in. No, I'm not put that plant right there. Anyway. anyway, that's it. That's all I have. Um, again, we are going to be working on this for a while. So um, we'll be in the lab. Please reference where the lab is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and finish painting that with material. Let's go over there. And typically, I like to go and do the corners because you can get more out of it. And it gets done quicker. All right, uh, you can create a doorknob if you like. Uh, you can go to the components and see if they have doorknobs. And they do, so you can, you have plenty to choose from. And you can add doorknobs to your doors. Um, and that's that. All right, have a good one.